So, I'm going to quickly show you how to use the tabs palette to uh, align columns of text. Uh, <clears throat> I'm going to show you in Illustrator the tabs palette in InDesign works uh, exactly the same way. So, this, this demo video uh, can absolutely apply to both Illustrator and InDesign. So if we zoom in for a second, I have <coughs> excuse me, I have a list of films directed by Christopher Nolan. Uh, and let me put in a title to my chart here. So every film has a number, a the film title and its its year of release. Um, I'm gonna select all my text. It's now Myriad Pro, which is the default in Illustrator. I'm gonna change it to Helvetica regular. Uh, I think I'm gonna make it 11 points. Um, and Uh, <clears throat> let me not use key commands. Let me show you how I got that. I'm going to go to type. Sorry, my mouse is acting up. Type character, which is also command T to get the character palette to change my uh, letting as well. So I'm going to make it 11, I'm going to make it 10 on 12 points of letting, I think. Um, Helvetica regular. Now, if you, uh, go to the type menu in Illustrator, and this is also in InDesign, and ask it to show hidden characters. You suddenly see a bunch of dots and what look to be like backwards P's. Uh, what's going on here? Well, these are invisible characters. They don't show up in a PDF. They don't show up in a print. They don't show up in exported artwork of any kind. Um, they are completely invisible. But by making them visible, you can see them on the screen. It's much like the guides that we, that we use. Um, they show up on screen, they don't print, they don't show up in your PDF. They're there just to help you. So I've turned them on this this dot that looks like it looks like a period, but it's in the middle of the X height. That indicates a space. And this character that looks like a backwards P uh, with no counter, that's called a pill crow. Um, and that indicates a hard the paragraph break, a hard return. Um, so you can see each item on my list, I have a space between the number and the title, and another space between the title and the year, and then my hard return. And in some places I have double spaces. Um, this is something that you want to remove. This is inconsistent. I had double spaces in about uh, a little less than half the items on my list and single spaces in the rest. We want consistent spacing. Um, now, you may notice a couple of things. Everything is left aligned. All of, all of my numbers are left aligned. Um, the movie titles are more or less left aligned, but because different numbers take up different widths, it wavers a little bit, and then Number 10, everything is bumped over a space. And of course, my years are not aligned at all because depending on the length of the film title, they immediately follow the film title, so they're all over the place. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the tabs palette to set up some tabs to, I'm going to line up all of the numerals on the decimal point, I'm going to left align all my film titles, and I'm going to left align all my years into three very neat columns. I'm going to show you how to do this. 
Um, first thing you need to do, select the text to window type tabs, you will get this tabs palette. Uh, you need to do two things to use the tabs. You need to set up tab stops up here at the top. Um, so you choose which type of tab and you click up here on the ruler um, of where exactly that tab is going to fall. Um, so it's not on the ruler itself, well it can be on the ruler itself, um, but the, tab, the arrow for the tab stop falls in this little space above the ruler. Um, so I'm, I made one tab stop here and you'll see when you move it around you get this line to, uh, to everything in the text box so that you can see what's going on. Another one here, this is where I'm going to line up my film titles. And then I'm going to do one more over here. I'm going to choose um, a little bit to the right of the longest title. This is where I'm going to line up my years. Um, I'm kind of eyeballing it right now. That's okay. We can get more exact later. Now this didn't change anything. These are tab stops. This means um, this is where tabs will move text to, but the second thing you need is you need to put the actual tab character in the text. So you put your cursor before the item that you want to align to the tab stop and you hit the tab button. This is in the upper left hand side of your keyboard. It just says it says tab, T-A-B. Um, you click, you, you hit the tab button. You need one before every item that you want to align. Hit the tab button. Hit the tab button. Now what did I do wrong? Ah, okay. I know exactly what I did wrong. Um, this panel is very finicky and exacting and um, can be a real pain in the neck. However, it's a great way to line up text really exactly to give you very, very good control over aligning things. So it's worth learning how to use it um, because you get very, very precise control. Um, so what I did wrong was I set up all my tab stops with no, no text selected. I didn't have any text selected, so it only applied it to that top line. And I want it to apply to the entire thing. Um, so, what do I need to do? I need to select all of the text, physically select it all, and um, click on these tabs again, just so that they all line up. So, remember, have all your text physically selected, actually selected. Now, uh, I'm going to go through, enter all my tabs. So, you need the actual tab character before the item you want to line up. Tab, tab. Now you may notice things are not lining up the way that I said that they were going to. Um, and I'll tell you why and show you why in just a minute. Let me finish putting all the tabs in first. Number nine. And number ten. Okay. I'm going to select all the text. I'm going to go to my tabs and figure out what's going on. Now the first thing I want to do, I want to decimal align these numbers. So instead of this left align, I'm going to click 
the decimal justified tab. And what this does is lines up every number on the decimal. Now, this only works if there's a decimal point, really. Um, uh, it's just sort of unfortunate, but that's how it works. Um, now this one, I'm left aligning it here, and this one, I'm left aligning it here, so that it is uh, just after the dark night rises. Why is that one moving on its own? Because again, I only have one line selected. This is this is where this tab this tab's palette can be a real pain in the neck. You need to keep remembering to select everything. Now it made two tab stops because I only had one line selected for a little while. Um, even though it's all about lining up whole columns, it doesn't assume that you want to line up every column. You need to actually have them selected. Now, let's talk about the different tab stops. So this one, of course, is left align, um, as you saw. This one is decimal align, that will align it on a decimal point. Um, let's look at a few other options. This one is centered. It will center on that. That might not be the best one to demonstrate it with. Let me demonstrate it with the titles. I can center everything on here with the center align tab. See all of these are center aligning to each other. Um, and then there's a right align tab where it will align the right side. Okay. Um, I don't want to do any of those. I want to do left align for the movie titles. I want to do left align for the release years. Okay? One other thing we can do. We can actually be super precise with this. We can click on the tab stop up here, and then here we get an actual... Um, uh, value. And you see this ruler does not snap to increments the way we might like it to, but um, I don't want 1.108, I want 1 pica 1 point. You can just enter that and hit return. I'm going to do the same thing here, I don't want 1 pica 7.59, I'm going to enter 1 pica 6 points. We'll line it there. Same thing here. I don't want 10p2. I think I want 10p. And that is how you use the tabs palette. Yes, it's a pain. It's also worth learning. Um, one other feature of the tabs palette, if you zoom out or zoom in. Essentially, if you change the zoom, if you move your artboard around, this tab's palette will get unaligned from your text. Um, that's what this magnet is for. If you click the magnet, it will position it above the text. So let me demonstrate by zooming way out. And now it's not working for me. Um, what this usually does is it scales it to the text and aligns it back to the text. And for, of course, since I'm demonstrating, it, it doesn't want to work right now. Um, that's what it normally does. So that's the tabs palette. Again, I've shown it to you in Illustrator. It works almost exactly the same way in InDesign, so you can use this demo for InDesign too.